I took the CompTIA A plus certification exams, and this is what you should know. Hello everyone, this is Skydy, uh, coming at you with a video that I do not regularly do. Um, but there is a reason I'm doing this, and I will get to that later. Um, <clears throat> I will more than likely split this one up into chapters so you guys will be able to move wherever you want. Uh, in this video where I talk about uh, the CompTIA A plus certification exams and uh, I'm going to assume that if you clicked on this video you already know what those are. There are benefits to taking uh, these exams that I took uh, the other day. Um, there's a big reason why uh, as an IT person, uh, especially an entry-level IT job applicant, uh, there's a reason why you want to take these. There's a reason why you want to take them, there's a reason why you want to pass them, and there's a reason why you want uh, them on your resume. Um, basically, what employers will look for, uh, they will look for the certification uh, way before they ever look for any kind of college degree. Um, I don't really like school. Um, so I might be a little biased here, um, but basically college is only good for a few fields and there's even caveats to that too because it's more, it's better when it's more involved and in my case it was. Um, so anyway, the main point I want to get across, the first point I want to get across is that employers will look for the certification uh, that you will get from the A plus uh, CompTIA exams, both Core 1 and Core 2. So going into what you should know uh, before you take the tests, because if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that uh, you will be taking them soon or plan to take them at some point. Um, and me being someone that has taken them, uh, I will be able to provide you a little bit of guidance um, as you go into that. So, uh, going into the knowledge you should know, obviously there is the Core 1 exam and the Core 2 exam. Basically, um, as far as the exam itself goes, let's start with Core 1. Um, it's very hardware and networking heavy, so like IP addresses and stuff like that. Um, basically, you have to know uh, the components of a computer, of a printer, of uh, other network-related items. And uh, speaking of network-related items, you also have to know uh, some IP addressing information, subnet mask, default gateway, stuff like that. Um, for Core 2, what you should know going into the exam are uh, you should be pretty familiar with different uh, operating systems. Operating systems such as Windows, specifically Windows 10, um, and the different editions of Windows 10 uh, being Home Pro Enterprise. Um, you should know a little bit about Chrome OS. You should know uh, quite a bit actually about Mac OS and Linux as well because there are uh, also command prompt questions so you should know uh, what some commands do and obviously commands differ between OS's specifically um, you could see some Linux command questions on there so you would have to have some knowledge about Linux commands and definitely about Windows commands and maybe a little bit about Mac OS commands too. I personally didn't get any Mac OS related uh, command prompt questions on mine but it may differ when you pick yours. Second thing that you should be very learned in is acronyms. Uh, the A-plus core exams are very acronym heavy. Um, so if you do not know acronyms for things like, for example, domain name server, dynamic host, IP addressing, APIBA, stuff like that, you will be very lost <laughs> on some of the questions because it is very acronym heavy. So make sure you know your acronyms. Um, 
next thing to know is a good way to study. Um, I personally studied uh, with a program called Measure Up. Um, it's a thing anyone can use um, to prepare for certain CompTIA exams. I used Measure Up a lot for a few months before I took these exams. Uh, basically allows you to, it gives you a very long uh, set of practice questions, questions that could potentially end up on the exam, but definitely questions that require you to know certain things that you will have to know for the exams, both Core 1 and Core 2. Um, so that's definitely worth taking. There's also a uh, practice mode on Measure Up itself that uh, is designed to be a lot like uh, the core exams. So Measure Up is a very good resource. Um, it's not free, but it is a very good resource. I studied using Measure Up uh, up until I took the exams, so I would recommend. Moving on, now you're in the testing room. Uh, what to expect on these exams? I know a lot of people, uh, myself included, before I took them, um, overthink these <laughs> quite a lot, and uh, I'm not I'm not throwing any shade at that uh, because I totally understand. Um, but uh, this is what you should expect uh, when taking uh, these A plus exams, both Core One and Core Two. Um, there are practical questions on there. Um, where you're going to have to know how to do uh, practical things. Um, an example of that is uh, servers. Uh, I got a practical question on my Core 1 exam where I had to know how um, to replace disks on servers, on a file server. Um, I had to know how to do that. I had to know what kind of disks to use, uh, because the scenario in the question was that hey, this server went down. Um, what kind of disk should you replace with this disk that's failing uh, to minimize risk of problems and stuff like that. Um, another example is building PCs. I also got uh, one of those where uh, it basically gave you a scenario like this person wants a super high-end gaming PC, this person wants like a more family general use PC, what kind of parts do they both need? Stuff like that. Um, another example is printers. Uh, printers suck. <laughs> printers are not fun to, to, uh, to main, maintain, they're, they're just not. But uh, you do have to know some stuff about that. Um, another big thing you have to pay attention to just in general is make sure you read the questions. Some of the questions are designed to trick you. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to that later. Um, there are also some kind of like tech support simulations. These will appear on the Core 2 exam, um, where basically you're in a scenario where you are interacting with a customer or some person in your uh, hypothetical company that you work for that needs some kind of IT support and uh, you have to know how to be able to respond to their situation um, and there's lots of multiple choice and this is where we're getting back to making sure that you read the question very very carefully and all of the answers as well um, because CompTIA does this awesome thing where they try to trick you with the wording of their questions and it's not it's not great if you don't read it, so read it. Now, how do I know all this? Obviously, because I have taken these exams. And um, I did pass, <laughs> I did actually pass both of them on my first try, and it was not easy. Um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. It's not like I just walked in there. In fact, on the Core 2 exam, I only passed by three points, so yeah. I know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to sound like I'm an, I'm an expert or anything, because I'm not. But uh, I am technically A plus certified in those. Yeah. So, uh, this point of the video is more geared toward my uh, general audience and, and my viewers specifically that are already subscribed. I know that uh, this isn't normally a video that I would do, um, but why am I making this? 
Uh, number one is because I know uh, people that are about to take these tests who want to go into some sort of IT field or increase their standing in the IT field. Um, they want to know what to expect, obviously, because like I said earlier, a lot of people will overthink these. Um, so that's why I did this, is because I was in that situation. And I had my instructors and I had my fellow students um, to guide me. And I also had um, Measure Up, which I used to study. Uh, but obviously not everybody has that. Um, a lot of people, general people, will go to places like YouTube for, inf for information about these. That is why I'm doing this. Um, also, to say that this is, it's, it's, it's not awful. The exams are not that bad if you know what you're doing. Which is another reason I'm making this video, is to try to point uh, people that are about to take these tests in the right direction uh, so that it's, it's, it's not awful for you. Uh, because in all reality, if you go into it knowing what you're doing and not second guessing yourself as you're taking it, especially in those multiple choice questions, it's really not, it's not awful. It's not, it's not bad. So, that's gonna do it for this video. <laughs> uh, I did want to uh, do this uh, as an update for <laughs> uh, my extremely loyal viewers that watched my last video. I talked about this a little bit in my last video. Um, but, yeah. Um, basically for me it went well, and because, because it went well for me, I decided it would be probably a good idea to give other people pointers um, for people in the future that uh, are about to take these tests, that are researching them, studying for them, getting prepared. If any of you people find this video, I hope it helped. <laughs> I really do. Um, hopefully it will ease your mind a little bit and will give you some kind of guidance. Hopefully this helped. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've been Scotty. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Why would I throw in the towel? I just got on my back. I don't make no mistakes. No. I'm coming for mine, and there ain't no one taking my place. Listen, I've taken some L's. Yeah, that means I lived and I learned. Now I got some money to burn.